This could unlock the Chicago Bulls. We're going to be talking about some key takeaways from last night's win against the Memphis Grizzlies and what the Chicago Bulls are going to need to build upon as they try to reach the maximum potential for this year and beyond. This is your host, Rico Greenhow, and you have found yourself on another episode of Bulls Digest. And so the Chicago Bulls win against the Memphis Grizzlies last night, uh, 126 to 123. They come back from 20 down, really go through an adverse situation and are able to work their way back. So this is huge, something that the Chicago Bulls can absolutely build upon. And I think that there are a couple takeaways that the Bulls are going to have to definitely continue to work on as they continue to rebuild and retool this roster. And so let's start with, I think, point number one, and that is the three-point shooting. And the two games that they have lost, they have been absolutely terrible in those departments as far as uh, shooting the ball from downtown and just in general. I mean, just the field goal percentage and just the shot selection has been terrible in those two losses. But in the two wins, we are seeing that, uh, you know, it has been like a, a historic rate for them because they just tied the franchise record in, at 25 makes from downtown. And also, too, just the way that the offense is just a lot more efficient. You're seeing that uh, players just aren't coming down, just uh, jacking up the three-point shot. But you also just saw the ball just kind of go from side to side. You see a lot more player movement out there. The shots now from downtown are a lot more easier for them. And at one point, there was a possession where all five players actually touched the ball before Zach Levine hit a tough three-point shot. And so I just think that that is something that the Bulls are absolutely going to have to build upon. It's because you can still play fast. You can still get up these attempts. You can still shoot the threes, but it has to be quality looks. And I think that that is what we have saw in the games against the Milwaukee Bucks and then also to the Memphis Grizzlies. This is something they're absolutely going to have to continue to maximize because this is the playing style that this team is electing to go with. Obviously, they're still, you know, getting the players developed and there's going to be, you know, some more players that are going to come in and you want them to be able to execute in this system. And so next up, you know, I think another key takeaway here is going to be the turnovers because in the wins, the Chicago Bulls have only only committed nine turnovers. In the losses against the Pelicans, they committed 21 turnovers. And then also, too, against the Thunder, they committed 26 turnovers. And so this is something that the Chicago Bulls can absolutely control. This is something that they've got to really focus in on. And I think that that's what you saw really in the second half is a team that was much more focused and they didn't beat themselves. They weren't out there, um, you know, not being able to get the inbounds pass. It wasn't a situation where where you see, you know, players just throwing it at their feet or like there was one uh, turnover last night that was wild where Vooch comes down and he just throws it out of bounds. And I think he was expecting I or somebody to be there, but he just literally threw it out of bounds. So stuff like that. These are things that the Chicago Bulls are going to have to clean up. You don't want to give teams extra possessions, especially when you're going to be coming in undermanned for the most part. Like you're a young team, you don't necessarily have the size and the physicality to match up with some of these teams, so you cannot beat yourself. This is absolutely something that the Bulls are going to have to get consistent at as they continue to try to build into a contender. Next up, uh, another thing that was like a kind of a, a glaring takeaway for me over the wins so far um, it's just been the ability to be either even or ahead in the steals category. So in this game, you see that we're even with the Memphis Grizzlies at five. In the game that we won against the Milwaukee Bucks, we won that, um, the steals category. And I believe Kobe White had four steals in that game. And it was just an indication of just how active the defense is out there. I mean, you're seeing a lot of guys just being in the passing lane. Uh, you know, they're making the correct rotations. They're making Making it tough on those opposing teams now and they're just passing into some turnovers and things like that and that all comes from effort that comes from activity and that's certainly something that the Chicago Bulls are going to have to continue to really grow on because even when you do get the players uh, that really kind of fit this system um, you know and it can run pretty smoothly on a game-to-game -game basis 
you are still going to need to bring that type of effort. You're going to still need to bring that type of detail on the defensive end. And that's generally a good indication of what you're doing on the defensive end if you're active and you're getting these steals and things like that and generating extra possessions for yourself. So those are some key takeaways in the wins that the Chicago Bulls are absolutely going to have to uh, continue to maximize as we go along in this season and as we continue to kind of, uh, again, retool, rebuild out this roster roster, rebuild out this roster, and try to get into being a contender once more. And so as we shift focus and we look a little bit more into the numbers and looking at the box score, you know, there was a couple key takeaways that I didn't get a chance to talk about last night. And it starts with Patrick Williams. I, I want to go ahead and say that Patrick Williams, even though he scored five points, he had six rebounds, he had an assist, he had two blocks, and I know he was a negative in the plus minus uh, box score. But I mean, his defense has been actually pretty good. I think that Patrick Williams has shown the ability to switch uh, on any player from one to five. And I think I'm seeing a lot of that effort out there for Patrick Williams. And I know it is challenging because we want to see Patrick Williams score. Uh, he was able to put, uh, put it together really in that Milwaukee game. But if he is able to just come out and just play this type of defense on a night to night basis and really be like a defensive anchor for this team, I think that that is going to be huge. And that is something that this young core can really build upon because, you know, I know that it has been kind of an up and down and a little bit of a struggle for Patrick Williams on the offensive end. But right now, Patrick Williams is up in his rebound numbers right now. He's also up in his field goal attempts, which means that he is being a bit more aggressive and also too he's up in his steals and right now he's second on the team in block shots and he is tied for fourth in rebounding and so I hope that he can continue to get better in those aspects and still be an impact to the Chicago Bulls team without having to necessarily score the ball because the Chicago Bulls really need Patrick Williams to find a role and if it is going to be a three and D player so be it and I think that he's going to get easier three point opportunities and he's going to get opportunities where he doesn't necessarily have to put the ball uh, on the floor because those have led to some turnovers for whatever reason but if he just has to turn into a stationary shooter and then just lock down I think defensively you know he can really find his way so I want to say that Patrick Williams even though the numbers weren't there I loved his defensive effort uh, in last night's game and so with that being said too I want to talk about two other players that uh, you know we were really wondering about going into this one and that was Kobe White and then also too with Ayo Desumu and I think that when we see Kobe White struggle, we also see Ayo struggle as well. We're wondering like, okay, I know that they have shown you know flashes before and they put it together, but it's just now about them just putting it together for a full season, having more highs uh, than lows out there. And I think that I love the fact that even if they are not scoring the basketball, they're still doing a lot of other things because Kobe White right now, um, he's averaging 4.8 assists. He's right behind Josh Giddy. Um, so second on the team and assist which lets you know that he's still a playmaker and keep in mind that both players are playing in a new role so for him to go out there still make things happen even if he's not scoring the basketball well that is a huge plus you know so and then next with Ayo Desumu another thing that I love about him is right now in the turnover to assist ratio he is right behind Lonzo Ball on the team so he's doing his thing there he's also getting rebounds too so he is fine ways to be impactful and I know he got it going in last night's game offensively but there's so many little things that he is doing and I think that both of these players are set to again I think take off this season especially as they continue to get accustomed to this new role you know remember this is where Kobe White is playing a bit more off the ball at this point in time and then you have Ayo who is now you know really uh, coming off the bench you know I think that Ayo is kind of doing his thing at this point and I love the fact that that both players Players have been really effective without having to score the ball and I'm really not too worried about them moving forward and lastly with Vooch I definitely want to give Vooch uh, a lot of credit man because Vooch has come in right now 
And he's really got it going uh, because I think one of his better years as far as shooting the three ball was 40%. That's when he was in between uh, the Sixers and the Orlando Magic. Right now, uh, he is shooting at 52.4%. I know it's four games in, but it's 5.3 attempts. Generally, over his 12-year career, he has shot 34.3%. So, look, Vooch talked about he was very confident in coming in in this offense, and he felt like he could do some things and Vooch is quietly getting it done so you know I want to give credit to Vooch uh, just handling his business out there and really just uh, being a, a steady um, you know piece of this offense and something that uh, I think that the players can really rely on especially if the shot is not going down Vooch is finding ways to uh, to make his shots go down so anyway in the comments, let me know what you're thinking about the Chicago Bulls here as they continue to try to rebuild this team and hopefully get to a contender status at some point. I just want to thank everybody out there for liking, sharing, and subscribing to Bulls, or to Bulls Digest. It means a lot to us here. And as we try to get to our goal of 5,000 subscribers uh, before, the, before the season ends, I just want to say make sure that you go ahead and mash on that subscribe button for me. And even though the Chicago Bulls Bulls are still trying to figure some things out, and we're probably going to still see um, a lot of ups and downs to go in this season. I'm excited about this team. I'm excited about the young players and what they have shown, the trust that Billy Donovan has shown, and I think that this team is going to turn it around sooner than later. So I'll see you on the next one, and go Bulls. Peace.